Hey there, everybody. It's me, Zanya Foco. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. Maybe you know me from my TV show on public television, or maybe you've read one of my books, or maybe you've seen me speak, or maybe this is our first time meeting. Either way, I'm really delighted that you joined me. We're going to take a deep dive into food and depression. Is there a relationship? Is there something simple we can do to help alleviate depression? Might we be able to use food first instead of medications or maybe help food make changes in our food to help us get off medications? Or is there any relationship at all? So that's what we're diving into. And so gather up any friends, anybody you know uh, to share this with because I think you're gonna learn some powerful stuff. I know I did. So let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna share my slides. Uh, with you, and I'm calling this Give Depression the Boot, <laughs> How Greens Fight the Blues. Uh, I think that's a, a pretty apt um, uh, title for what we're going to do today. Let's just step back for a minute. Prevalence of depression? Well, what is it? I'll tell you that 20% of adults will report a, a major depressive episode in the previous year. That's kind of how they define it and MDE, a major depressive episode, and or it's 11% of teens, right? We've all been hearing about how teens, it seems like it's increasing, and yes, according to the Journal of Pediatrics, uh, anywhere from 2005 to 2014, they have found that it's an increase of 37%, so um, we're not crazy. We're seeing it increase. Um, it really is, and the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, I'll report that the rates of all, all our top 10 leading killers, um, all of them have either fallen or stabilized, with the exception of one, and that's suicide. Ah, that's, I mean, we're, we are seeing and hearing more suicide. And so what's going on here? Uh, how can we make a difference in this? Uh, so let's just take a look. Um, the brain, I think it's really important to take a look at the brain. Uh, right, and I'm quoting I, Dr. Eileen Buford Mason. She summarized something that we all know about the brain. We know that it's the most metabolically active organ of the body, and its nutritional needs are 10 times, count it 10, are 10 times higher than those of any other organ. And therefore, it stands to reason. I mean, think about it. If you have a standard American diet and you don't have all the nutrients that the brain needs, um, let's face it, um, it stands to reason that it could be the first, first organ to falter when nutrients are undersupplied. And you think about a typical teenager and you think about their standard American diet and what they eat. Um, could depression be the first sign of other diseases? Like they don't necessarily manifest heart disease at the age of 12 or 13, 14, 15, 16, or so cancer, well, sometimes they do, but um, really the standard American diet, which is very sad, uh, averages 2.2 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, and that's if you include counting french fries, okay? This is uh, what we're looking at, and um, this is the temptation of, I know, even my teenage son, who knows better, he has a temptation to eat most of these kinds of foods. It's our culture, right? And he has to fight it every day, and I have to remind him every day. You now he's off in college, and he uh, assures me that he's doing well uh, with his food choices at college. But take a look at this. I mean, um, you know, we used to in the 80s, 90s say it's the fat, it's the fat, just choose low fat, you know, baked potato chips and baked fries and uh, do just low fat donuts, <laughs> um, low fat free cookies, snack wells, you know, that's the answer. And that was so wrong, right? Because actually fats are beneficial if they're the right kinds of fats. So it's the good fats and, and the bad fats, it's getting those in proportion. Is it the sugar that's the problem in this picture? Um, well, yeah, sugar is a problem too. Or is it the refined flour? Yeah, that's a problem too. Um, really, it's it, you can count your fats, your fiber, your macros, all of these all day long, but I'm gonna tell you what the real big problem here is that there's there's very few fresh, wholesome fruits and vegetables in their whole state with the fiber. And once we start adding that to this diet, I call it 
the solution to pollution is dilution. <laughs> if you start putting in a bunch of fruits and vegetables in their whole form, uh, the fiber and everything, you start adding that. It's amazing how you'll eat less of these foods and your fiber goes up, your antioxidants go up, all these great nutrients go up and amazing things start to happen. So let's just think about this, how that happens. Um, and what we're seeing, and what we're seeing is, and this is the crux of my presentation today, I'm jumping to the chase of it, in case you don't feel like waiting until the end. The crux of it is a higher consumption of fruit and vegetables has been shown in lots of studies, and I'm going to show you those studies and links to all of them, um, that it cuts the odds of developing depression by 62%. So when you go to the psychiatrist and you're diagnosed and they say, well, they do a script. I mean, do they ask you how many fruits and vegetables you eat? If you're a parent and you take your child to the psychiatrist and you're sitting around the table there and, and you're talking and your kid is slouched down drinking a blue Gatorade and eating Skittles and he says, let's up his Ritalin just a little bit or let's up his depression medication a little bit. You know, is anybody, is the doctors, the moms, anybody asking how many fruits and vegetables is he eating? What's the quality of his diet? How much sugar? How can we drive down sugar? How can we get antioxidants up? Do these even matter? And guess what? Scientific studies show that it does, that it absolutely does matter, up to 62%. So why wouldn't we use fruits and vegetables first before our medication? Why? Why wouldn't we? So now I'm going to be sharing these slides with you. It's going to be a PDF link. You can go through and you can click on these links and see um, where these, what, you know, to back up everything that I'm talking about. So I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to do that with any speaker that you follow up um, with their references. Okay, so the next thing. Here's kind of how, how does fruits and vegetables work? A couple of ways, quite a few. One is there's neuroinflammation in the brain. Mm -hmm, actually, and an anti-inflammatory diet is really important to help our brain function properly and that early faltering that uh, we talked about. So there's antioxidants, you know, you slice an apple, it starts to turn brown. And if you put lemon juice on it, that slows that for browning, right? And that's the vitamin C, the antioxidant that's in that, that slows that browning. So antioxidants are very powerful. Um, they're really, really important. And there's vitamin A, vitamin C, but all kinds of phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are in the plants. They will give it the color. They are what help the plant fight in, set from insects and pests and drought and sunshine. They are what protect the plant and what protects the plant helps protect us when we consume that. Now, a lot of people talked about the Mediterranean diet being really good and it is really good. A lot of people think Mediterranean diet, that's olive oil, it's salmon, it's fish. It's fruits and vegetables, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you look at the Mediterranean diet, you go to a Mediterranean restaurant and there's Swiss chard on every menu. They serve Swiss chard like we, like we serve French fries here. That's how common it is. They have kale, they have leafy green salads. They always have cooked vegetables, not in the token spoonful, but in a bounty. Um, they have grilled vegetables as an appetizer. They eat vegetables. All right, so you always hear about the fish and the olive oil, but they have way less cheese than we eat, and the meat that they eat is fish foods in smaller amounts, and they have way less red meat. But really, the crux of it, of a healthy anti-inflammatory diet, is fruits and vegetables. That's step number, <laughs> big, big, big step. Folate is another reason why we're seeing fruits and vegetables do the power that they can with fighting depression is that folate means foliage, it's greens, it's also in orange foods, it's also in beans and legumes, that these are important for us to include a lot, but folate, folic acid, uh, one of the B vitamins, we want a lot of that. And then also the other reason why they work, it's the monoamine theory. And I wanna talk about that right now because this was brand new to me and I thought it was exciting and I think you'll find it exciting too. So take a look at this. How do greens fight the blues? Well, 
there's happy neurotransmitters. You've all have heard of these, serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine, right? We've all heard of these. Dopamine gives us that happy drive to, to want to get out and do things, and serotonin gives us that calm feeling, and norepinephrine. They're all important. They're all really important, and they're called neurotransmitters. I've always called them neurotransmitters, but they're also called monoamines. Same word, uh, same thing. It's monoamines. But take a look at this. The monoamine theory is that people who are depressed have elevated levels of monoamine oxidase, M-A-O, oxidase. And what that oxidase does, oxidase means that it eats up your levels of neurotransmitters, making you feel depressed. So you don't want a lot of M-A-O oxidase. You, you, you don't want a lot of that. And it's a natural compound. And But guess what? We need to figure out a way to not have a lot of M-A-O. Well, pharmaceutical companies have figured out a way to help us out with that, and that's why they come up with the medications, which is an MAO inhibitor, so that it'll inhibit that oxidase so that it saves your neurotransmitters, right? Well, guess what? We found out that there's natural monoamine oxidase enzyme inhibitors in fruits and vegetables. Say what? Who knew? Yeah, they're, they're in fruits and vegetables. And they explain that improvement that we saw, that 62% decrease of uh, depressive symptoms in people, explain that mood associated with increased fruit and vegetable intake. I, I don't know about you, but that's like exciting. You're seeing that fruits and vegetables can replace these pharmaceutical drugs that have nasty side effects. <laughs> wow, that's, that's kind of cool because I don't know about you, but you know that people who are depressed, what do they do? They just eat more bad foods because they're depressed and so they want that comfort food and they have reach for more sugars or try to make them feel better and they're in a really bad cycle of eating. And I'm telling you, depressed people don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. But if we can help them over that, help them into that, eating more fruits and vegetables and help them consuming them, not just a couple days a week, not just three days a week, but help them on a daily basis, getting more fruits and vegetables in, in a way that's easily absorbed so that we can like treat it like food, like medicine. And we can make a huge impact. We can make a huge improvement. I mean, this is like, this is, I don't know, this is a lot life changing, exciting. So take a look. Another thing that I want to teach you, we talked about antioxidants and we talked about folate. Look at these studies and these are all hot links. So you can go here, click on this and it will take you right to use that PDF, the link and go through and see the studies that I'm talking about. They tested nearly 2,000 people and found that a higher total blood carotenoid level, that's in carrots and tomatoes and all these carotenoid levels, beta carotene, you've heard of that. In fruits and vegetables, if the, the total blood carotenoid level was indeed associated, that higher level was associated with a lower likelihood of elevated depressive symptoms. That's exciting. Very exciting. Also a study on lycopene, which is that red pigment found in tomatoes, but it's also on watermelon and pink grapefruit. So if you're buying grapefruit, always get pink instead of white, you'll get more uh, of the um, lycopene. Papaya also in mangoes, but on 1000 elderly, uh, they found that those who ate the most tomato products um, had about half the abs of depression. So it's nice if we can have tomato products every day. Some people eat tomatoes every day. I don't know a lot of people that eat them every day, but it's great if you can. Um, so really important. And a number of cohort studies, you can click on this link and go and watch it, is that it shows low dietary folate increased the severe depression as much as threefold, three times. So, you know, this is some really, really big stuff, really big stuff. So food is powerful stuff. It, it's as powerful as medication. I love to say food is medicine and fruits and vegetables are it. I mean, they are it. You can count your macros all day long, but it's all about how many fruits and vegetables you eat. So very important. So 10 servings a day. If you know me, you know I say 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Because, you know, a long time ago they said five a day, five a day campaign because the Americans only eat 2.2 on average. So we figured just getting them to double that up to five was good, but it's really a political compromise. And the studies we saw that showed that we needed to have seven to eight servings a day to have that impact on depression. 
So, um, but studies that fight cancer, they say anywhere from nine to 13 servings. Uh, the new USDA guidelines say nine to 13 servings a day. Um, so, hey, if you're counting some potatoes and sweet potatoes, which I love, those are good foods too. I didn't see and fiber and amazing stuff. If you're counting all of that, it's 10 servings a day, okay? Um, here's how I think of it. I go for 10, knowing that I'll fall a little short and maybe I'll get seven to eight. Because if you go for five, you'll probably eat three. <laughs> if you go for the seven or eight that you're really going for, you might only get six. I say 10 a day. It's a good solid number. It's, it's not seven to eight, it's 10, okay? It's 10 servings a day. So I like to say eat a fruit or vegetable with every meal or snack. Don't be just eating chips or crackers, cheese and crackers. Forget that, grab some carrots, grab an apple, always have something with it. You won't eat as many of those other things. In fact, don't eat any of those other things. Just eat fruits and vegetables with some hummus, man. That's like awesome. Or have a big fruit bowl in your house that just speaks and that is always there and not filled with fake fruit, okay? Filled with real fruit. And eat a salad daily, if not twice daily, lunch and dinner. I mean, if you're not doing at least that, I mean, that's so simple and it's so delicious. Um, sandwiches, eat salads, and you'll get so much more. And veggies to grains. It's not that we can't have grains. We can have grains. It's just that grains need to be a smaller amount. And it's kind of a three to one ratio. Three to one ratio. Pasta, you know, people say, isn't pasta fattening? And I always say, not the first cup. <laughs> because think about it. Um, it's we, when you go to a restaurant, it's three and a half servings of pasta that they serve you. That's like seven slices of bread. I said that to a lady. I said, did you realize that when you eat pasta in a restaurant, that's like eating seven slices of bread? And she said, oh, no, Zanya. I eat seven slices of bread with my pasta. <laughs> Only in America. Yeah. So if we can, so does that make pasta bad? It makes the serving size of pasta bad. And whole grain pasta is the better choice. So I like to include some whole grains in my diet a little bit, just this much breakfast, lunch, dinner three grains. That's it. That's it. I'm over 50. I don't get that many. Now my son is a teenager. He gets more whole grains in a day because he's so active and he fuels that exercise. But a big deal is if it's three to one veggie to grain ratio, great way to live. Okay. This is a great way to live. And what's a serving? You know, you say, well, it's the size of your fist. And so men have a bigger fist. Children have a smaller fist. So really, I think it's the easiest way to go is just think of it as the size of your fist. Okay. But you're probably looking at this going, hmm, I got four people in my family, 10 servings a day. That's 40 servings a day of fruits and vegetables that have to evaporate out of your household. <laughs> wow, that's, that's kind of tough, isn't it? So we're probably going to have to employ a preservation method, some sort of preservation method. You can buy fruits and vegetables and stock them in your freezer Absolutely, I highly encourage that. You get your fruit bowl for fresh, you're gonna choose that first, you're gonna use frozen later in the week, you can use some can that is no sugar added. But I'm gonna tell you, there is freeze drying. And freeze drying is the A number one preservation method. It locks in and freezes that nutrition and it makes it light and conducive for carry and travel. And if they freeze dry fruits and vegetables, it locks in nutrition and then grind it down and you can put it in a potter. So I'm like super excited because Thrive Life has come up with this ruby and they, I'm on, I think month four now, I'm starting month four of one of these every day. It's giving me so much energy. I mean, I thought I was energetic before. I thought I thought clearly before. I think I think even clearly um, it's delicious. It starts my day off with boom, four servings of fruits and vegetables right out of the gate. And it's not just any old fruits and vegetables. I mean, we got some a stay berry in there and maki. I don't ever buy those or use those, but it's in there, um, whether it's the purple. I just love it. I also love the green. I love the orange. I love the red. Um, you know, they're all great. Um, the red, of course, giving you that tomato and beets. You probably don't eat beets on a regular basis and tart cherry but really giving you a variety of these. And, you know, I said a serving is the size of your fist, unless it's freeze dried. If it's freeze dried and ground down the water, everything, but they keep the fiber, which you gotta keep the fiber, which they do, it's whole food. It's still whole food, but it's a preservation method that makes this doable. And I love it when convenience meets conviction. 
<laughs> Usually those two aren't together, but for this product, it's totally together. I am so in love with these envelopes. You grab them, I put them in my briefcase, I take them, I go on a four day travel trip, and I could have at least one of these a day, and it really solidifies my day. So I just wanted to share that with you. And what's the bottom line? The goal is, however you want to do it, 10 servings a day. Goal for 10, you'll have at least seven to eight servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And if you want to start out out of the gate in the morning with four servings, you can do that with a Ruby. I'm, I'm in love. If you want to still do it the old fashioned way and get them all from your diet, you can do that too. But I think it takes a village. I think it's a combination of both. And when you put them both together, it's amazing things can happen. And that's when you can go to your doctor and you can go to your doctor and show him who's boss. When it comes to, he'll go, wow, how are you feeling? Hey, I don't need uh, depression medicine anymore, or you don't need cholesterol medicine anymore, or you don't need uh, blood pressure medicine because we're talking about potassium. We're talking about lowering all these things. So I know today I talked about depression, but this exact same thing is everything that helps fight cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, uh, you name it. Um, depression, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, you top leading killers, I'm telling you, um, fruits and vegetables are really the answer. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I, I hope that that's been helpful. I hope you see that there's a way we can make this happen in our everyday. And uh, I just thank you for joining me today. And just remember, go and take on your day and be healthy and uh, make it happen. You rock. Thanks. Thanks for joining me.